They are really, really scary. Fifty-eight. Yeah, after DR. Seventy-seven plus fifty, hundred and twenty-seven. Okay, the thing is um, uh, bloodied. Gouting out in ways that uh, um, that suggest that it's broken or near broken. It's still it's still kind of bearing down on nibbles. Uh, at this point in time. Um, you can hear the fight all the way from the manor, Zeta. You're standing outside. You notice that the uh, the white pony got spooked a little bit, and you can hear this horrible cacophony, and you can see you this, can see a storm. You, you can see this fiery <laughs> storm and a winter storm all around the old church from where you're standing on the hill. Uh, <laughs> what have they done? <laughs> she casts fly on herself. Okay, so I'm gonna and add. Starts uh, heading over. Add <clears throat> Zeta into the mix. Uh, I'll just have her ha go at the end of the round. Sure. I'm just checking to see what other things Nibble's got for powers. Oh, I almost forgot. I can try and bite. Ah, uh, forget it. I'm not going to try and bite it. Grizak, what are you doing? Um, I'm going to fly above, and I'm going to cast Shout, because I don't know if that is going to work or not. You're going to cast Shout down on the creature, kind of facing it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're like fighting over here. I'm going above and it's going like hitting the top of it. And I don't know if it's going to do anything, but I will try. So shout is a a cone-shaped burst of 30 feet. So you're yeah. at least 25 feet oh, above this... it. Yeah. You you can avoid nibbles because you can you can kind of sense yeah. things out of the fog. Yeah. It, SR does apply, so I don't know if this will work. I don't think it'll work actually. Yeah, let me let me check. Um, no. What? Probably what not. What the fuck are you doing in my house? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. So we're surrounded by <laughs> by the local garrison. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a shout effect that goes off. Um, it it doesn't. It's loud. It, it hits the ground. And... It's more like <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. These these like <laughs> visible waves of energy coming out of uh, out of Grizak's mouth uh, as they pound the ground. Uh, 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 giant nibbles. You never knew Grizak could yell so loud. You yelled so loud that your ears hurt a little bit. Hmm. Um, but this thing is m of more concern. It raises its fiery falchion again and tries to tries to. Uh, um, uh, Cleave through uh, uh, nibbles. AC forty-two. Yes. I mean, even Grizzax isn't that high. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> the ash, ash and cinder. Oh, sorry. Um, you. That's you've it. been Yeah, the ash and cinder does sixty-six damage per round. Oh, okay. We should be this, adding this that. round. This one round it did nine, and the other round it did twenty. Okay. And you get I reflex will... saves uh, against the Ash oh. and Cinder. Okay. Uh, just give me a second. It's like an incendiary cloud. It just keeps on, like, venting out this horrible smoke and, and uh, um, fiery hot cinders. 25 and uh, fail. So okay, so you take, take 4 20... and 20 off of your, uh, your yeah. protection. Uh, yeah. And then it attacks with its sword. The falchion does. Uh, 28 damage. Is that and, including fire? No, and 8 fire. Right. And then it tries to knee nibbles. AC 46. Oh, God, this thing hits. Um, it's... Well, this isn't in my house, that's fine. Uh, 19 <laughs> damage. And uh, 11 fire as it's as it's bearing down um, on nibbles. nibbles. Doing. He's still living. How much fire damage total in that round? Sorry. Uh, from the uh, two, between the two strikes. Between the two strikes, a uh, total of 19. 19. Okay. Uh, 73. Yeah, nibbles is uh, he's he's hurt. You're hurt, and you want to get out of here? Well, he's not. He's 
Uh, so you can sense where he is. What you can't do bloody. is roll heel checks through the uh, uh, through the multiple layers of um, of of vision reducing things. He would I'm, need to I'm say, basing I it. I need to get out of here. I'm, yeah. I'm basing it on. Oh, that hurt! Oh god! So, so Grizak, you're basically yelling. Do you want to get out of there? Is that what you're yelling? Uh, yeah. Okay. What is and Nibble I'm saying good. in his rage? <laughs> No, Jack! Almost done! <laughs> yeah, he needs to get out of there! <laughs> Alright, Callie? Uh, she's, like, running back to get Zeta, because this is too insane to be okay, real. Okay, so it's uh, 30, 70 feet of movement to get out of the out of the trash. Alright, that's that's more, yeah. Okay, so she's basically on the road, running. Yeah. Probably see Zeta coming in on flying and like just waving her hands like. This but, is she's, awesome. but she's, <laughs> but she's invisible, moving. so she you can't see her. Yeah. <laughs> the greater invis is working uh, in unexpected ways, or expected ways. Sparky is just hovering, staying at a you respectful stay out of distance. One, buddy. It does not argue with his master about that. Uh, giant nibbles, who's, oh, who's in this torrent? Yeah. Nibbles, smack around. Ah, uh, 28 misses. 28, 28 hits. Oh, wait. No, it misses. AC, now, question. AC is there a flank between Grizak and it? Oh, and Nibbles? No. no. Well, I guess you went on the wrong side, didn't you? You, you said you were, hover, you, were flying, <laughs> you were flying above and oh, putting a cone, yeah, yeah. A cone away down. from his away from his thing. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so, I don't know anything about electricity in these things, right? You know that they're creatures of fire. I'll double check some later. Let me get the rest of these. Uh... Okay, so your weapon kind of got tangled up with the falchion, uh, okay. and you're just, you're, it's trying to push it down into you, and you've got your axe up, and you're holding the weapon. Oh. Uh, another miss. Your weapons are locked, and then finally you and you, you unhook your weapon and, and give it a, a, a really bad bash to its hip. So, 40, 19 damage, I guess? Uh, didn't miss? Sorry. Sorry, that'd be uh, uh, 29. 29 damage? Okay. 40, 156. Okay, it, it, it's really injured. A couple more bashes and it might fall, but it's still kicking. Zeta is fly running. Yep. Uh, so sixty two forty. You get across the water. Okay. Zeta! You can hear Callie yelling, but you can't see her. Grizak. Uh, Grizak is going to fly through their squares, and uh, through the the through this. You can't the... see me though. Eh? I know where you are. Oh, you know, yeah, that's right. You got it. You, you I know where you are. So I just fly through this and cast Dimension Door. <laughs> I will save. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I don't even. Uh, nope. You That'll be it? next level. Oh. <laughs> oh I don't. Yeah, I uh, do Grizak's not gonna do that right at this moment. He's gonna take a breather. He's gonna take a step back. <laughs> okay. He, you don't fly into the creature's. Square. I do not fly in there because um... okay, the brass devil still has an opponent that is is right underneath it it's going to swing with its massive falchion towards giant nibbles oh um ac 41 it's no would be doing well right now right? yep is gracchus gracchus would be doing well right now can this fight be seen from the observatory um so Renee knows that uh, for a while a reclusive golem crafter took took up residence in the old church, um, mm -hmm. and that he left behind this really cranky brass devil uh, golem thing. And you knew that just if you just alone. just as long as you didn't go within kind of like a territory which is clearly marked by everything being burned, uh, it guarded what little treasure was left behind in the church. You always suspected the wizard would come back, but you haven't seen him in like a decade, um, and you haven't been strong enough. You didn't feel that you were strong enough to um, uh, to to take it on by yourself. That and it kept a lot of like lower level things, kobolds and goblins away. 
they were afraid of it. I, I, I see it as more of a symbiotic thing. Yes, but you were kind of like adjusting a small knob and trying to get something into focus when when you hear an explosion and, and oh, that's the sound of the golem and something's pounding and like the golem's fighting something. We can, we can add Renee I to the initiative. You, Grizzak. <laughs> That's one way to call the master of the place. <laughs> what is Renee's uh, um, initiative mod? I believe it's plus five. Okay, I'm just going to add you to the end of the round. Okay. I'm assuming, um, I, I'm assuming turn? you're not wearing your armor every day, that sort of thing, like you're in no. normal clothes or whatever. Yep. Marty, uh, Mar in my turn, I turn into an Earth Elemental. Is that cool? Sure. I didn't do anything. I yeah. stood there. Or okay. flew there. Sure. Uh, the Brass Devil hit with AC-41. Uh, 22 damage from the, uh, uh, from the, the Brass Falchion. And 2d6 fire. Four fire damage. It then tries to knee nibbles. Okay. Uh, oh, I, I, didn't, I, didn't roll the, I didn't roll the percentile. It hit. Uh, four how fire. How much fire damage? Four. Four? Seven. All right. AC 48 for the kneeing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stick and fucking hit. It, it, it's like classic golem, right? <laughs> it just has a, such a huge two-hit modifier. Uh, Fifteen damage um, from from the bludgeoning damage, and then two fire. Okay. Oh, and the percentile. The kneeing missed. Oh, okay. Because of the uh, the choking fumes. <sighs> Alrighty then. So, uh, Callie. Zeta, it's horrible. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm right here. Why are With, you within me? two minutes of arriving. Hey, let's fight that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then she pauses for a moment, kind of looks into this open air shrine. It used to be a, a temple building, and she wonders why there's a bunch of like dried rose petals, like. Thousands of them, kind of swirling around in the in the wind. Okay. Giant nibbles is not thinking about rose petals. He's thinking about smashing the thing to bits. Yeah, payback. There we go. AC forty four. There is a solid connection. AC thirty two followed by a mischance twenty percent followed yeah, by a okay. backswing, hitting it in the chin. Crying, crying. AC thirty one. All right, so two more percent. As soon as I as soon as I pick up as soon as I start fighting with Damien, these rolls are gonna like <laughs> like three, four, five. <laughs> so you hit it. Right. You, you backswinged up into it's... its chin and then kind of stuck the uh, the the pommel end of the. Uh, um, of the haft of the axe into the innards and just started stu uh, stirring it around. And they all hit. Oh, I already rolled them. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Perfect. Okay. Horrible grinding sound as, as your axe is vibrating inside of it, fire sh uh, spewing out everywhere. You can't like, see me or anything, right? Not no. even in the reflection? You. Not even. No one can see you in a nude. <laughs> All right, uh, three at four. No longer invited to your house. <laughs> plus thirteen. So this is after dr. Twenty-nine, thirty-three, and forty. So seventy, a hundred and two damage. Okay. Thank you for the thing is shuddering, uh, and is falling apart, and then it explodes. Nibbles went. Uh oh, <laughs> oh yeah! Boom! <laughs> There's a horrible torrent of fire as bits of metal and everything are are, are flying out from the golem. Uh, every creature within thirty feet of the golem. That's just the two of us. Just gets hit by this. The two of us. 
All right. We can make an infra reflex. 12 d8 fire damage is 56 fire damage as this horrible thing explodes. Ah! Thank God for spells! <laughs> reflex save, I got a 16. That's not making it. Spells. No. 56? Yep. Uh, 18? Holy okay. crap, I think Grizak makes it. <laughs> uh, Grizak is uh, actually quite dexterous. Um, 27. Okay, Grizak flying, kind of, kind of hunkered down while he was in his little uh, air, uh, earth elemental form, and sort of warded away from most of the blast. So you take half, which is twenty nine. Twenty one. Oh, sorry, uh, twenty eight. Thirty five. Okay, so fifteen. You take fifteen damage after all the protection and resistance, leaving me at a hundred damage, meaning I'm still standing. <laughs> okay, the incendiary cloud. Oh goes away, uh, and there are just bits of this steaming, smoking golem lying in the street. It was... it was feeling tender. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Come here. <laughs> Good job! Uh, he's gonna start casting heal, heal the heals on you. Okay, uh, Rene oh. and Zeta. Uh, Rene has his bow drawn and aimed out the window, just pointed in that direction. <laughs> Got it. Uh, she, yeah, she comes flying in. What is going on? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, so you're getting 2d8, three of those, so 6d8 plus 27. Nibbles is a machine. That was just disgusting. Uh, 56 healing. Uh, okay, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, oops, uh, one more d, one more d six. Uh, another twenty healing. There you go. Oh. Uh, so that was how many spells? Four spells. Four spells, so thirty seconds of healing. Yeah, yeah. Z Zeta's there. Normally, you don't do slug fights with slugging golems, typically. <laughs> it's not, not generally. Zeta, I'm really. over here. Yeah, I was... I'm over here. Why it, can't it, you see me? You have to roll a one to miss. <laughs> Why can't you see me? I'm over here. It should oh, show up. It should she, appear now. She, she should appear. She can anything. hear her. Yeah. Okay. She casts see invisibility. It's yeah, weird. invisibility. I, that's why I'm I'm not ignoring you, but something but bad happened audience. over there. She goes running back. <laughs> Eventually, it's, the it's... the mist and the uh, I'm assuming you're getting rid of the sleet storm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is, is everything all right? What happened? Oh, nothing. Nibbles go have some fun, Igrizak. <laughs> we were, uh, yeah, we were just playing here in the rubble and this thing charged us uh, for no reason. Never mind. We luckily happened to have all the spells that we needed up. It's not dismissible, but only lasts one for one round per level. So it eventually yes, goes away. Gone. Yep. We, we break wizard toy. We accidentally uh, severely destroyed this thing. Very, very, very bad. Just We're just this. lucky to have um, everything that we need running. It's weird. Accidentally, huh? <laughs> yes. Whoops. <laughs> Good job, Nibbles. Uh, uh, how much damage does Nibbles have? He's got 24 left. Oh, okay. So they're not uh, actively hiding. No. <laughs> nope. So... Does everybody recognize Nibbles? 24 are healing for you, buddy. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, last time you saw them, the this is a this is the most recent incarnation of Nibbles. Um, you don't see Grinthark anywhere, which makes you nervous. Which usually means something somewhere is being stolen or screwed around with. <laughs> Something's being done fucked with. Mark, yep. <laughs> Mark, you got 24 healing. Oh, thank you. Is there? Any wood nearby? Yeah, there's like big rotting heaps of it. Uh, these are, these are these are burned trees, but they're they're still standing. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna write a note, tie it to an arrow, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna launch it at something uncomfortably close. <laughs> Okay, by this point in time, um, Callie has 
gone and peeked into the uh, peeked into the stone house. Hey, there's stuff in here. Oh, nibbles like stuff. Bunch of squish stuff. Shiny but... stuff. Uh, yeah, that there's a big box of it right over there. Uh, give me a second, guys. Hold on, hold on. You want to blow shit up anymore? It's already been blown up. At the far side of the temple, almost like it's sitting there to taunt you to come in. Um, the old altar of the church has a bunch of baubles and shiny, uh, shiny things um, uh, upon the altar. There's a bejeweled silver box that is stuffed full of um, what look like glittering gems, a silver mirror, some weapons, um, rings and things, a brass ring staff that, that seems to be casting light to, to like really accentuate some of the baubles. It's stuck in a place where it can't be quite squished by the by the golem, but you do see the smashed pews and what looked like a really strange workshop, like a mold for this creature. Okay. Um, other big devices and chains and winches and 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 like and like an abandoned wizard's golem crafting laboratory. Alrighty then. The golem threat is gone. Um, the group of you are going in or not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nibbles is going in. Oh, well, hold on. Uh, Grizak was detecting magic. Uh, some of the baubles have magic. Uh, anything around the floor, the entrances, the... No, the golem seems to have been enough of a, uh, enough of a trap. Well, he does walk in and out of here all the time, so... Uh... <laughs> you do see that there are several squished, uh, but really dried and, like, rotten away uh, kobold and goblin bodies. Like, like things have tried to come into here. Yeah. Yeah. And do the winners go to spoils? Something uh, like that. Yeah, nibbles like being spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years and years of adventuring like this, where they just like, what's that? Let's smash it. Oh, let's take it stuff. <laughs> these, 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 these two characters are insane. <laughs> the, the, it, I have a feeling like Grinthark, Nibbles, and and the Grizzak are like the poster children for why the Imperium is necessary. <laughs> like, Don't let these ruin your lives. And just three assholes. <laughs> okay. There's a bejeweled silver box with some gemstones and assorted coins, a squared platinum chalice with clockwork wings and strange engravings, a silvered mirror, a masterwork heavy cr a repeating crossbow, a masterwork merchant scales, a masterwork appraisal kit, a masterwork clockwork craft kit, kit a wand of identify, a ring of feather falling, a scroll of restoration with a thousand gold piece component, a ring of protection plus two, a horn of fog, a, a potion of invisibility, and the brass ring staff is a plus two plus two quarter staff that sheds light as per spell and three times per day can empower any cure spell third level or lower. That's pretty That's awesome. cool staff. That's a very cool staff. Pretty two weapon fighting warrior priest. Pop, pop. <laughs> Um, you could probably, if you had craft golem, make them here. Oh, what character has craft golem? I, I, construct, I, I don't know. I'm walk to take that golem cool. back. <laughs> uh, the golem also dropped its huge sword. I don't know if Nibbles wields huge weapons. Uh, I think he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Got a sword down. <laughs> it, it, it is a huge falchion. I'm putting it on a sheet. Yep. Okay, it is a so, plus two fiery huge falchion. <laughs> you can't use... 2d4 becomes 2d6, correct? Yep. And then two d six becomes two d eight. Two d eight. Okay. They 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 built it wrong apparently. It did. And then three d twenty for some reason. <laughs> <That's> the worst. <laughs> awesome. So it's like the brass devil sword is effectively it. 
Uh, yeah, we played an entire campaign, a uh, two-year campaign with Pathfinder Kingdom Building Rules. Uh, we did not, uh, we did not stream it. Um, it became two people hunched over a spreadsheet while everyone else was bored. Uh, and it also did not scale when your kingdom became quite large. Like no, it, 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 became, it became incredibly unwieldy. Yeah. Um, they, you basically need a program or like serious spreadsheet skills to run it. Um, we learned that the rulers of the kingdom shouldn't be the people going out adventuring when the baron who was the rogue died to a trap. <laughs> They're like, wait a second. The most important guy in our kingdom, yeah. We send him out to go and search for traps? Hmm. <laughs> uh, which, is, which is pretty funny. Um, it's the same joke I've made when we were playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, the video game. It's like, huh, the Baroness is the one that goes out and undoes the traps. It's, it's, uh, it's a little weird. So what we ended up doing was we had the ruler characters and then the adventuring characters. And that kind of, that kind of made things a little more realistic. Yeah. Um, not, not too different from this campaign where we've got the masters and... And the gladiators, yeah. And the I have some ideas, just... Drake. On how to, are like playing our masters in the arena from time to time. on how to do mass <laughs> combat and and kind of like manage kingdoms kind of in a different way um and that's something that we may do in a future campaign um mark uh, sorry marty i think the it's, limit it's worth are... doing if you have if you have Hello? a bunch of people that really want to do this they it, it might be worth playing through but just know that it's 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 a lot of it's a lot of spreadsheeting <laughs> It yeah. would work a lot better if each player had their own little kingdom and it was like you don't have characters, you have kingdoms or a kingdom and a hero. Well, that like, would I be think... that would with this system would be an insane amount of paperwork though. Well each person would have to do their own insane amount of paperwork. So they can't be bored because you have to be able to do your paperwork. Yep. But that's that's where... I got a job. <laughs> and not all the roles were equal like some had a lot of no. decisions to make while others was like every once in a while roll a d20 and get made fun of when you fail you know like like it yeah. was, it was yeah. when you was... succeed there's no bonuses for succeeding when you fail and then some of the penalties are really harsh yeah. uh, so it, it was a worthwhile experience because it was every time every time we do a dd campaign i try to do something different uh and as you could see with gladiating uh with the gladiator stuff there's like a game within a game uh, and we always try to do something a little bit different each time we play a campaign. And this was the different thing was uh, managing your kingdom. Uh, the camp the campaign lasted for what eighty games, so it was like a long campaign. We all generally had fun. Um, when people did stupid things and screwed up the kingdom, that's when things became not fun. Um, not all the players, I think, bought into it. No, I did not. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't going to say nothing. <laughs> uh, which, which was like, it, Mark, Mark was Mark was a, uh, a good sport in that he he just plays whatever we we have. But I could tell at times he was very bored with the kingdom the, building. The aspect term of it. mold request was born, and that was where <laughs> an individual decides to go fuck it to whatever the team is doing and i'm That's gonna do true. i'm gonna do what that i is, want that to is, do that is not true and, and <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> all right all right we were that opening up old wounds not true that's <laughs> a gross misrepresentation of the facts thing <laughs> the mold request <laughs> all right you find you find some things in this um uh in this um i got, I got two items i want already yeah, you, you'll, have, you'll have to identify Easy. it. I just, I just kind of told yeah, you yeah. what it was. But you, you find a bunch of baubles and, and things that look good. It didn't all get into chat. Is it in the party pages? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's in the, yeah, party pages Doom, Doom Loot. Doom Loot. Yep. That, that's not a bad haul there. At no. all. <laughs> not at all. Hmm. And power is what? Uh... Okay, an arrow. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it was Nibbles was about to leave with some of the loot and there's an arrow sticking out of the uh, the frame of the door. There's a little note on it. Better be a note telling me where there's more treasure. <laughs> reads the note. What does the note say? What language? 
it would be in uh, would be Imperial Common. Okay. Yeah, he speaks Imperial Common. And reads. Nibbles. Uh, Nibbles. Grizek. Please return to the tower. If you could mind not smashing the things, that would be uh, helpful. I forgot how not fun he was sometimes, no smashing. <laughs> Blackface! Help me lift. <laughs> uh, Grizak, how strong is little Grizak? I think I just grab everything, turn into uh, some kind of large animal, and there we go. Hey, what's that? You notice that in the, um, um, there's a ruined kind of, like, pit. It's like there were stairs that lead down into the pit. Um, there, there is a big uh, statue. It's kind of like a multi-statue piece of art. As you see um, Nibbles, Grizak, uh, Zira, Ziva, Fabian... Renee, who am I missing? Uh, Vamaris. Vamaris. Yeah. Um, all doing battle with a green dragon. Oh, that long time ago. Yeah, a while ago. Where's everybody gone to? What a dear. It's a clean streak down his cheek. <laughs> Even a little Sparky. Sparky was really small and kind of kind of <laughs> hovering above Grizak's uh, uh, shoulder. Uh, Gri Grizak would have walked around the uh, the walls. Uh, stone cutting. If there if there is something, but he's gonna walk around like eh, eh, looks all right. Nope, there are no <laughs> there are no secret passages there. Um, Grinthar's mm -hmm. got his daggers. Renee's got a bow. Um, they even kind of made part of Renee's face um, look like um, um, a particular oh. ghost. Yeah. The dragon slaying ghost. I can't remember what the guy's name was. This is a dude from uh, Conan the Barbarian. Hey, I know you! <laughs> I'm trying to remember. It was the ghost of. That was a while ago. Uh... Never break back. I just got to was uh, Sola. Sola. That's Sola. It. Yeah. That's it. The ghost of Sola. Mazathek's in there. Just kind of like he's just just a little Mazathek. Off, <laughs> off to the side. He's got a pot in <laughs> Huh. Is this your grandmother and your aunt? Hey, that's Nibbles. <laughs> you were small back then. Same with you, Sparky. She says she's she's like This is this is a great work. Yeah, well, I was just uh I was back then, you know. Back in the good old days. The fall of Eta Parax. Uh, must have been, must have been, what, ten years ago? Something like that. Eta Parax the Green, it says here. She's wiping off some of the dirt. Yeah, it was a green dragon. He was acting like another dragon. He, he was me trying to make the whole town think that it was a, it was a, a black dragon. Marcella had killed it a while ago. That's why when it was a fake. It turned out to be a green dragon. Hey, you're getting your colors right, she says. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I was getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my manners? It's purple. <laughs> Lugging the treasure back to the tower, um, they return to the manor. You guys are all looking at the baubles at the uh, at, at the kitchen table. Um, are you ready to see your guests now? 
Yeah. Master. Uh, yes, I think they are... Uh... I need to see them. Shall <laughs> I... Will you be eating later? Once they are... Later this evening, I will eat. Mm. Yes, yes. Go to his room, which I think is over in the shadows somewhere. Yeah, I can change his clothes. Put on whatever tunic and <laughs> tunic and trousers. <laughs> yep, something something simple. Okay. Uh, you know, walk into the dining hall. There's the rest of the tower. There's no need to hide Hold it. On. Uh, we are in the manor. There it is. I'm still looking. Brittany! Uh, da -da 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 -da, big ass hug. Okay. <laughs> Renee's cold and clammy. Hey, he's just as nasty as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't doing it very long time. Has been he a grabs... while, Zach. Uh, how long has it been, or is it fuzzy? Like, um, like fifteen years or something like that. Or like three, I guess two, three hundred. <laughs> no, it's 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 been like on the order of like five to ten years. Oh, well, I did visit him. Oh yeah. yeah. Where is Green Tark? Oh, uh, Dragon's got him. Oh, I don't mean he's got him like. I got him. He's got his uh, his bed where he's sleeping. Speaking of which, let's go wake him up. Grintark stole my bow when he was here last time. I had to make another one. <laughs> yeah, he stole my stuff too, so let's go get him. Where is that dragon? Um, it's, he looks, he's like, it's, it's that way. You know it's in the north somewhere. Is he yeah, north? north? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that way. Ah, oh, dinner. Excuse me, um, Mr. Man. How are you not dead? Oh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Look at this. Look, look. He comes over. Yes, this, this is... This is Zeta. Your record looks familiar, don't you? Hello. And that one over there is Evander. That's her brother. He stands and he bows slightly. He, he, the, he, he looks perplexed. We are the grandchildren of uh, Ziva and um, our grandfather, uh, Fabian. Bonsoir. You... Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you. Bonsoir means hi. Uh, I see yes. you have... Uh, Found Prism. Uh, he has been. Uh, she has been staying here. Uh, she's always liked this place. Uh -huh. He just said he's nice to see you here and nice to have you in his manor. Chris, he looks back up you. <laughs> we we can understand what he's saying. <laughs> he he looks back to me. He said it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Uh, could I have a disguise check for Renee? Sure. Uh, <laughs> plus 26. 43. Okay, can anyone beat that perception check? Uh, nibbles can't. I'll have to check. I don't very much. No. All right. Who am I kidding? No one uh, How are you not dead? <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat that. <laughs> Does yeah, Grizz, a bunch does of people Grizz are standing that... politely at this point in time as they're they're being introduced. What's uh, your uh, does Grizak know? Grizak yeah, Grizak knows be... it's been explained to him that he that Grizak knows that uh, that Renee has been sick and that Zira's job was to tend to him. Uh, oh no, he, he's I guess he's fine now, but. I don't know how he's still doing, because Zira's not around, but he was sick for a while. And Zira was taking care of him. Hey, how you doing? You still getting your... Your, uh... You're over your sickness? I am still afflicted by the illness. No. 
Okay, I guess. Uh, well, you're still with us. That's good news. Still, there's something that's keeping you alive. When he just stares at Widget. <laughs> He's asking what's for dinner. <clears throat> Radimer clears his throat. Ah, yes, this over here is Radimer. Um, Pleasure I really forgot what you. he's here for. Pleasure to meet your acquaintance, Mr. Chevalier. Uh, you know the Imperium, right? Uh, he's he's not really with him, but he's kind of with him. But he, he's, he's allowed to uh, go into... Uh, he knows about the dead and the ghosts and stuff. Uh, Alan's widget, that little one. I am of the Order of Fossers and a Necromancer, amongst other things, yes. Yeah, right. yeah good job. Are you That's a white a... necromancer or a black necromancer? I gray. would consider myself gray. Uh, I, would, I would have said brown, but whatever. <laughs> Look, he's looking at yeah. I uh, understand that you're an old companion of this druid's. How, how, I how did... rescued. I helped rescue him from the wolves that were trying to eat his ace. Greensock, Greensock. I think they can understand each other. Why did you rescue him? <laughs> I'm assuming you didn't know him. It's the only. We rescued him because <laughs> Zira had a very big art, and she wanted him rescued. Yeah, they were kitty cats. You saw things in him that no other can see. Uh, so well, they were they were they were sick cats. They didn't like the presents I gave them. So he is uh, kept safe, despite Oof. better judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Callie. And that's Callie over there. She's just around. Bonjour, Callie. So I saw the statue of uh, of of the dragon slayers in in town. You, you you look very brave, she says. Messy. Somebody was... screwed up your face, though. It was it was weird. That was a long time ago. It. Uh... He looks pretty good for an old human. Are you some sort of wizard now? Yeah, with your stuff over in the, uh, in the smithery, right? I've picked up a few things over the year, but no, I am no wizard. So what sort of work were you doing? Continuing the researches of... Uh, what was that guy's name? This was... Hunkley. Hunkley. Continuing Hunkley's research... Oh, that bastard. I remember his name. And what was Hunkley looking into? Hunkley was worried about monsters from the moon. Uh, just, uh, Zeta just kind of raises an eyebrow to that. Like, what? Ka Callie <laughs> snorts a laugh kind of thing. Like, <laughs> uh... Then she realizes that you're uh, that you're serious. Tron, thanks for the follow. <clears throat> Welcome to the it... channel. <laughs> Moon that... monsters? That's those aren't real, right? One can only hope that they are not real. <laughs> hey Sir Thompson, how you doing, man? Sir Thompson. So, uh, is there a secret to long life? Uh, some sort of magic potion, drinking the blood of elves, something? Do share. I, too, can't help but be curious about such things. I have lived a long life. There's something called privacy, guys. Come to a man's oh, home. This has been good. Please enjoy the hospitality. 
Gear up, Renee. We're gonna be leaving soon. Where are we going? Well, Green Thark ain't gonna wake himself up. We go get Green Thark. And then we go find Zero. Yes. Zero, I mean, shit, sorry. My bad. When's the last time I saw Zero? Uh, Zero is a couple of years now. You, you're having a hard time, kind of. Zero was off to investigate the enemy. Um, something about shadows returned. Oh, and what? So, does Renee have any strong memories around the Shadow War? Um, no. Um, you do remember joining Zira on some raids, um, but you became you were experimenting with your. Um... I spent a lot of time doing the blood. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Renee, just for the channel and not for others, uh, let's do some background details for Renee. Long ago, his parents traveled from Grand Bastion to Terra's Lean, where Renee was born. He grew up in the village of Copper Creek and became a blacksmith there. It was in Copper Creek that he met and befriended two elven sisters, Zira and Ziva. When Zira and Ziva traveled to Belheim to visit their aunt, Renee went with them. It was in Belheim that Renee swept up and got swept up in the events <laughs> involving Hunclay's research, the planner Rift at the monastery, and the dragon Aetoparex the Green. During this time, Renee had been struck twice by ghoul fever and saw strange visions while sick. He knew they foretold the coming of something dire, something world-shattering, and had something to do with the very moon itself. In the time after the death of Aetoparax during the Shadow War, Rene began to experiment with contracting ghoul fever on purpose to aid in his <clears throat> visions of the stars and beyond. Zira, the healer, had always stopped him before the disease progressed too far. One evening, something went wrong, and Rene's heart stopped beating. He rose as a ghoul and continued his research. I don't read there. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Zira became, uh, began to visit Rene less and less after he became undead, which pained Rene deeply. He suspected that she had to keep her distance from his damned soul, as she was a moon priestess, after all. These thoughts were never shared. Rene's servant, Nilbog Thek, tends to a small rose garden for Rene who periodically cuts a few fresh flowers and places them at the Shrine of Seven Roses in the ruins of Belheim. He does this whenever he can pry himself away from Hunclay's telescopes. Rene also has other suspicions. Give me a sense motive <laughs> for Rene. Mm -hmm. All right. 30. <clears throat> nice. I'm going to I'm going to give you a secret Adam. I don't know if okay. R Renee like um, somebody's tuning a harmonica in the back. <laughs> oh, that was uh, that was a, a car <laughs> horn. Um Okay. Um, Renee's suspicion. <laughs> yes, whatever so you said. <laughs> Renee knows something about Nilbog Thek, like the nature of his servant. But the suspicion is.
you, you think that the devil um, screwed up the formula on that fateful night. Mazathek was helping you with these things. Even though Mazathek did not like what Rene was doing, Mazathek is a skilled alchemist. Mm -hmm. But you think that the creature that you trapped long ago in the basement somehow influenced Mazathek to making a very potent hit of ghoul fever as opposed to something that was measured just, and just tried enough. and tested and yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Just enough to chase the demons. It was when you confronted the devil that Mazathek's... Devil in the basement, um, 300 years ago. That Mazathek's corruption became apparent. <clears throat> and I think we'll leave it at that. I don't know if, if you, like, this is not something that probably Renee shares, but... No. Yeah. So, so the, uh, th the Shadow War, like, like you became obsessed with this research, and the more time you spent away from the tower, it was less time that you were you were spending on research. You've got all sorts of notes. Someone that has helped you uh, in doing this research is an old gnome by the name of Bassie, who what who is Bassie? All, uh, she doesn't live here any longer. Um, you, you think that she's got friends in Terra's Lean. Uh, you know that she she knows the caretaker. <laughs> Uh, and that they are part of a organization called. Oh, Rene is also a member of this organization because his researches are um, are important to some of those. The Academia de Philomati Mystico, or also called the Philomath Mystics. Oh, fuck, awesome. Those guys are cool. <laughs> yeah, those guys are pretty cool. <laughs> So Rene has a symbol, has a ring somewhere with the symbol of the Phyl Phylomath Mystic. Uh, uh, he he is not a high-ranking member, but he is an honorary member because of how old he is. And uh, Rene has actually um, done some scholarly research where he has given the names to features on the moon. He knows more about the moon than potentially anyone. <laughs> Uh, they have a neat, uh, I think the French named a bunch of these things because Mare, I think, is C. So you've got a bunch of like Mare insert name um, as I'm looking at my moon uh, globe here. Yeah, Mare, Mare is C. So you, you've named a bunch of like moon seas and craters and little mountain ranges and that sort of thing on the moon. Awesome. So, so you, you should you, have you, a you, can map add a, of you can add a copy of of your treaties where it's it's like your encyclopedia of moon terrain or something like that. Um, you've got you should probably build a map like a like a like a, a yeah. big map of the moon. Yeah, R Rene has built maps of the moon, or at least the parts that he can see. Chevalier treaties on the moon. Chevalier, 300 years is a lot of time to do scholarly research. On the moon and its geo, uh, geograph uh, and, and its features. Topographical features. Mazathek serves dinner. You guys notice that he, nothing is put on Rene's plate. And... Uh, while there is uh, wine poured into his glass, Rene doesn't drink it. In Nilbog, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, there is a hearty stew with some uh, with some rye bread, um, some uh, nice cheeses, as well as uh, red wine. That so, uh, you know, hungry? The master has already eaten. Yes, yes. He was not expecting visitors. <clears throat> so, uh, if we're taking you on the road, do we have to worry about, like, sunlight, or garlic, or silver, or, you know? Nosy people. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? Yes, I saw what you did there. Uh, don't worry, Grin uh, Grizek. Uh, no, I am okay to travel. We are to find Grin Thark, and you were from, was it Terezlim? 
When is the last time you've left this town? Mm. Out of curiosity. Oh, um... Uh, which was that hut with the, uh... With all the silver and salt? Grizak? Yeah! Are you looking for more nosy people? Ah, looking for more nosy people? Uh, you mean more, you mean like more help? Could be help, could be hindrance. Well, if it's your friend, it's probably hindrance! <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, alright, sure. Be good at fighting dragons. If he learned properly, he should be good at it. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. We had a visitor here not too long ago. Yes, unexpected it was, yes. I do not believe the Maris uh, survive. You know, he died a long time ago. Ah, poor bastion. He, he owed me 20 gold pieces. Ah, well. He should come, he should go. His, uh, the last time I came down was uh, from his request. Answering the question about when's the last time he left the tower, <laughs> he answered that as when's the last time <laughs> he left the upstairs of the tower. <laughs> oh yeah, like in the spring, in the spring you redid the shingles on Bassie's house. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. You you you, you, you go and make you go and once, make arrows once a month, once a month to to uh, to drop off uh, roses and you know. And well, which was the which was the the little home there? It's got all the salt and silver. Uh, on the windows and the door. Hey, Fox. That would be Bassie's house. Oh, what's with all the foxes? Hey, Fox. hey, Fox, what's going on, man? Uh, which was all the silver and salt, though? That's for, like... Ward away evil spirit. Away? Or in? Gives you a... <laughs> no telling where the evil is. Speaking of nosy people, this guy... All right, so uh, when are we going to leave? Get your stuff ready. If we're off to fight a dragon, then we probably should get some weapon, considering Grintark stole mine. Little prick. Oh. Someone's a little upset. You just play <laughs> joke. That's all. Just joke. <laughs> just a joke. I took your bow. You had this for two hundred years. It's just a joke. <laughs> so easy for him to say because Grintark probably can't steal <laughs> nibbles his axe. <laughs> Fair. Uh, yeah, nibbles axe way too big. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, I am a little. Aren't we supposed to be look? Uh, aren't we supposed to be looking for? Sorry, I was falling into Shogun's voice. Are we supposed to be looking for, um, Zira, because she knows about the shadow stuff? Yes, we must find this is Zira, your great aunt, I believe. Says Radimer. Hey, uh, let me ask you guys a question here. Uh, how many of you know how to deal with traps? At what level? At my goddamn point. We go get Green Thark. If I got the stories right, you're worried about Green Thark stealing things, traps. Is he some sort of thief? Yeah, oh, the goddamn yes. best one there is. Yeah. Great thief, very good. Steal your pants and you not even notice till your nuts are cold. Uh, it's very funny. <laughs> 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 he might even put a smiley face on there. You wouldn't know. 
<laughs> yes, he did that one time. Very funny. <laughs> Green Park was here, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Callie's like, oh, she's, he sounds like fun. <laughs> Nibbles, Nibbles almost uh, he is so funny. <laughs> Green Park is, I mean, Renny, how far is uh, Ziva, uh, Ziva from here? Nilbog doesn't seem to like Grinthark. Like, he, he's upset that the Master's bow was stolen. Zira, I have not seen in some time. Do she you know is... where she is? She went north. North? Oh, Grinthark ain't that far away from here. In the same direction. Uh, how close is the temple? Or the monastery. Uh, it was like a couple, like a, a day's walk. The monastery of Saint Vamaris. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it is where the Palearites hid uh, during the fall of Terrasleen and uh, during the Shadow War. Um, Vamaris uh, lived a long elven life. Um, he survived the Shadow War and trained a bunch of disciples of, of Palor. Um, he was made a saint in his religion uh, post. Uh, Postmortem. Like most saints. <laughs> and occasionally monks do wander here to go and pay homage to St. Vamaris. You haven't seen one in a long time. <laughs> Aside from um, uh, the guest last month, you know that there is a dwarf monk that has been um, uh, poking around you suspect that the monk may have met his end um, because there are some very cantankerous purple-scaled naga that have taken up residence in the tower. Um, you don't know what happened to the the moon naga. Mm -hmm. um, although Rene has spoken to the moon naga several times, you know it's some sort of like prophet creature. Yeah, the oracle naga thing. Yep. Uh, these spell hurling purple scale snake things have taken up residence in the um, uh, the monastery. You warned this dwarf by the name of Cade. You you recall uh, not to go there, but you're pretty sure he went anyways. Are you looking to get the? Uh... More members of the old. This is more to Zeta. I, I think, yes, everyone we can. There was something special about your group. Not the least of which is not fucking dying. <laughs> I don't know why I'm alive. I don't know why I'm here. It it, it boggles the mind. <laughs> Sparky's not, like, yeah, I told you. It twisted. Uh, he was like this uh, before he was old. Or he this was already bad. old when he was this tall. He did not hey, get Rennie. more mad. If anything, he is uh, less mad. Renny, the bird is still here. Don't talk about it like that. My word. How awful. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you for your hospitality. Do you know precisely where Zira went? I don't think I know precisely. Nope. I do not know precisely where. Mm. She will return here eventually. Oh, by the way, we killed the golem in the town. I saw that. That the golem made it uh, nice and peaceful around here. There you now say. I have to go back to sweeping up and cleaning goblin filth out of streets. Meh. Not so bad. Well, well, too bad. Get you out of house. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh air, good for you. 
Because <laughs> he doesn't understand. <laughs> Fresh air, nice meat. Why don't you meet some young people? <laughs> <laughs> Eat a few. <laughs> Everyone eats. You have a look at some of your treasures. You can divide those up. Uh, Renee, are you inviting them to stay the night? Yeah. You don't have the facilities. You have the room. It just a lot of the furniture wasn't replaced. If they brought bed rolls, they can probably sleep in the in the uh, the bird room. Yep. Feel free to stay the evening. Thank you for your hospitality. Yes. Nibble's called couch. Uh, Nilbog will get you anything that you need. Good. All right. Ooh. Look at these trinkets! <laughs> Grizzax looks playing with it like, hey, 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 Kids <laughs> act funny. I make nipples in the floor the time. <laughs> oh, look at those hit points! Oh, yeah, boy! Yeah, boy! <laughs> Alright, Nilbog says quietly that he'll bring Renee's food up a little bit later after he sees the guests all, are all tucked in. Uh, do we identify the stuff right then and there? Yep. Um, I would like one of these two, to be honest with you. I can keep the rest as crap. Nilbog provides you with some blankets. Um, you guys are free to kind of put out your bedrolls uh, uh, in this room. Um, if there is anything that you require, ring this bell. For your safety, I'm going to lock this door behind you. Yes, yes. I will lock the door to the to the main hall. You can go into the kitchen, or you could go into the dining room if you wish. Uh, don't walk in, don't walk on the front door carpet if you find it there, just saying. Yes, the master wants to make sure that you're safe tonight. Yes, yes. Yeah. Anybody else freaked out about this guy? He I'm still he, in the room. He, which one? <laughs> He puts out some uh, some berries and um, um, crackers and some uh, squeezed juice, um, as well as some wash basins, and then and then closes up the the door. And you can hear it locking. Uh, well, I'm gonna take this and that. He's grabbing the ring of featherfall and the horn of fog. Anybody really want any of these? Oh, I suppose you did go into battle for it. Um, uh, well, I'd suggest that if with Radima, uh, you're the priest. Hey, he looks Although, at the staff. Can I'm, you I'm actually looking at the uh, the <clears throat> scroll of restoration. The the staff. Yeah, he'll, does Zeta he'll... have cure spells or no? He'll take the scroll. Z Z Zeta does not. Okay. Oh, she does actually. Sorry, she does, but not enough to make it work. It be oh, better than cure light. Is it? Like, like I think she's got cure light, cure serious. Same as it, it It's better off in the hands of a priest. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so yeah, and the and the staff. Priest. Yeah. Uh, Nibbles is, I think, going to nap the, um... Radimer doesn't want the staff. Of, he, doesn't, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't cast enough cure spells. Uh, he yeah. heals using negative energy, too. So, uh, so then I would go to Zeta, I think. Because the bards at least get... Ooh, uh, sorry, one sec, guys. I'll be back in two seconds, uh, okay? The, uh, the Grizzak will only use it as a, um, uh, moderate, because of the way Druid healing works. Oh... Okay, Zeta will take Well, we, we meet up with Arlen, they can go in his hands. <laughs> or whatever. Sure. Okay, I'll put it on Zeta's I'll, character sheet for now. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold it for Arlen. Perhaps he can make better use of it. Hmm. We'll see where this goes. Uh, nibbles, nibbles, nibbles. What kind of rank do you have? 
No. Uh, Nibbles is throwing in a ring of protection plus one, and he's taking the plus two. Okay. Go ahead and add that to your sheet. Done. Uh, everybody has a ring of protection plus one in this group. I must. I, I have one. Uh, she, she, don't, she probably doesn't actually. Oh. And goes on Callie. Right. The one after that, that can go on Renee. Renee needs one? Well, yeah, but he's not in the room and it wasn't part of the treasure hoard, so that's fine. Okay, I'm erasing the ring of protection. Go ahead and put it on Callie. A wand of identify, I assume, goes right. into the hands of the bard. Maybe the bard should... or, the, or, the, yep. or the widget. Or the oh, wizard. widget. Okay, we'll put it on widget. Yep. I forgot about widget. He's so small. That's kind of the that's kind of the goal. <laughs> uh, the appraisal kit and the clockwork kit are both interesting. Uh, uh, Brené and well, well, Widget would be. Widget's keen on the appraisal kit. Widget's welcome to it. Does anyone and scry? Then... Are there any arcane scryers? Uh, I have to check. A silver mirror here. with a thousand should be on somebody who can. Mm -hmm. Come on, Zeta. There we go. Ah, uh, Zeta, does she scry? Zeta does not scry. That's wizard work. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if uh, Radimer has that spell. Might be too high a level for him. Strong, I think, is fifth for wizards. Yep. Man, yeah, he only has fourth. Okay, I'll just leave it in the uh, the pile for now. Cool. Uh, the dirge of the four uh, Radimer has, because it's got the ghost inside of it, so I'll put that on his sheet as well. Uh, I think the bow will go on Renee once you get on the road. Yep. I'll, I'll stick it on a sheet now. Yeah. I'm assuming nobody's going to... By gonna... all means, yeah. Go ahead. Kick him out of the... Fuck you, old man! Oh, God! Okay, you guys um, are kind of cloistered in in uh, Chevalier Manor. Um, uh, Prism just goes back into his cage or her cage and and just sort of like conks out a little bit and sleeps by the. Uh, um, so am I the only one that thinks I'm in more danger this evening than I was in last evening? Oh, you'll be fine. Uh, who's that? Casts Wild Instinct. All right, Sparky, you keep uh, keep an eye out for anything. Going like Brimstone. Anybody want a rope trick? Uh, please. Um. Yeah, all right. Hey, is the gnome still there? The one who found out about the countdown clock. Bassy is alive, as far as they know. Um, Renee maintains her house. Uh, she became obsessed with the same research that Renee and Hunkley were at. She has written many treaties on the subject. Uh, and she's in retirement at Terra's Lean. Renee doesn't know whether or not she'll return, but has been just sort of making sure the house doesn't uh, mm -hmm. doesn't fall down. Uh, he, last uh, last season, he replaced the tiles on the house, um, the shingles. And um, yeah, she has <clears throat> devoted her life and centuries of time to studying the strange Otra, um, uh, along with along with Renee. Uh, she's probably the became one of the more prominent scholars on the subject uh you know that she was also very parent she grew very paranoid about things staring back at her from beyond and she took many precautions um against uh, horrible creatures uh, you know that the philomath mystics um she is one of them and you may see a very ancient bassy in the future Renee is collecting up 
key parts of his research that's in written form uh, and basically putting them into like little scroll tubes that are the size of javelins okay. to put in the efficient quiver. Is there a... Or will you be leaving us for a time, Master? I don't know yet. Mm. I, I believe they ask during the meal, but... Uh... It is confusing. Yes, yes. As you know, I cannot wander far from here. Yes, it is. We uh... are bound to this place. If we clean up the basement, uh... mm. Mm. <laughs> I will tend to these important things for you. I will keep things clean, yes. Yeah. Keep the lenses clean. Do not get any uh, errors on them. Of course, Master Rene. And then the roses. Yes, the roses. Yes, yeah. You will return, will you not? It will be a long time. Alone, if you do not. <clears throat> I think loneliness is what causes the madness. Oh, yes, he is quite mad, yes. Yes, yes. I am all that is keeping him here. <laughs> Such a good goblin. He was, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He did a good job. Oh, yes. He has taught me a thing or two about alchemy. <laughs> yeah. uh, a blessing or curse? Hmm. Sometimes they are both blessings and curses. You should know this, Master. You of all people. Really starts, like, putting on armor. <laughs> suits up for the morning and then sits in front of the fireplace till dawn. <laughs> okay. Is that fine? Yeah, you shouldn't have overland flight at 4th. Yeah, I was I thought I took it I thought I got it from a domain, but Okay. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't care about the collateral damage to destroy the empire. The powers in the dark tapestry is the way to do it. Hey, man. That, that, that's, I've that's, got bigger fish to that's fry. That's not unfair. I've got fish that's on the moon. Unfair. Moon fish. <laughs> Biggest fish of all. <laughs> okay, Nilbog Thek uh, helps you pack up your things. Um, ever the consummate servant bound to this place. Yeah. Ever the consummate servant that you never quite trust. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Morning comes. Um, Nilbog Thek is unlocking the door and, and raps um, 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 gently at the door. Rise and shine, guests. Rise and shine, yes. Uh... Basins of cleaning water and breakfast have been prepared. You know, this place uh, doesn't have a lot of windows. No. Is you certain the master's not going to burst into flames when we put him in the sunlight? An old master used to live here, Hun Clay. He was very paranoid, or so, so I've been told, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He you met his right? end. Also, <laughs> I was told by oh, good stuff. by some lowly low kobolds. So low. This <laughs> arc in pocket dimension. Mm. Renee is waiting for you outside. I think the master is looking forward to stepping away from his telescope for a time. Hey, he, uh... His work is so... So very important, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, very important. Uh, would there any chance we could see his microscope? Uh, telescope? Megascope? Perhaps scope? the master will allow you up into his workroom, into the observatory. It is for him to decide. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Wouldn't want any <laughs> sticky fingers making off with things. Grinthark obviously leaves a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. Did he steal your underwear? No, no, no. Because I stopped wearing underwear because of that. He stole Sola's bow from the master, yes. That's just, that's just motivation to go get him. Go bring him back and rescue him. Oh, that's yes, he has taken about. much from many. Yes, yes. Sounds like a real charmer. <laughs> oh, a yes, yes, he can charm you, yes. Tying his boots. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for the hospitality. It's been a fucked up evening. I, I will share this with the master, yes, yes. No need to thank Nilbalk. I'm glad to know that you've been living here for hundreds of years. No art on the walls, no furniture, no sunlight. All oh, um, there was once great things here, yes. Yes, but many of these things were sold. If it is art you wanted to look at, perhaps you can go up into the library, yes. Oh no, the, the, the empty cubicle room with the bird poo was perfect. Thank you, sir. I could let you see a painting of your great-great-aunt, Lady Origina, the, the caretaker of Belheim, yes. Hey, Zita, you want to go see a painting of your aunt? I will have it brought down. He goes and brings it down. Weird. He talks about himself in third person. You guys pile out. Rene is all ready. He's decked in, what, mithril armor? Mithril full plate. He's got a bow, a sword. Uh, oh, cool. He's got a... Uh, an Ayun stone floating around his head that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't do nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, the dull gray yeah, Ayun stone. Yeah, Rene. Yeah, Rene's got his suit on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rene is very shiny. Shiny and easy to hit. He comes down with his wrapped up painting, and it's a painting of Lady Orgina. It's um, her sitting, her sitting uh, um, in a large chair at the, the head of a table. Uh, Lady Origina doesn't have elven ears, which is weird. You, you said this is your aunt. She's oh kind of yes, got the human face. She underwent some sort of procedure to round her ears. Yes, yes, so that the people of of Belheim would trust her better. Yes, yes. It is one of the many manipulations that are used to help placate the people oh back when there were people here yeah, in this fine little village yes yeah back mm -hmm. when there were people <laughs> whatever you know fucked everything over in the first place 
Wars are horrible things, yes. Yes, the coming of the Imperium, yes. People moved to the cities. This place became too dangerous, yes. So, Imperials, not the Shadow Army? Oh, they are out there, yes, yes. Zira went to find them to see what they were up to, yes. We should be going. Remember, Rene? Master? She went north to figure out why they tried to steal some of Bassi's scrolls, yes. Were they magic scrolls or were they just like informative, informative scrolls? Oh, most likely they were ancient scrolls that Bassi used in her research, yes. Why would the enemy after so long Raise their ugly head, yes, yes. So long ago, so long. Yeah, so long ago, because everybody lives forever. Oh, not everyone, no. No, no. No, no, no. No, no. No, 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 not everyone. God damn it, and, and it's no or yes, I'm confused as fuck over here. And he <laughs> smiles a really creepy smile before returning to the kitchen. So, uh, pleasure to have you with us, Renee. Can we leave your house now? But don't forget the carpet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no carpet, carpet bad. Carpet more bad. Welcome to me. Nilbog Thek, who has many of Mazathek's mannerisms. Um, perhaps they are a learned trait. Uh, no. Closes the door, locks the door. You can hear him un uh, unfurling the, the carpet. Okay. Uh, Good luck with your adventures, Master Chevalier, yes, yes. And all of you, yes. Uh, yes. Keep the yeah. fire burning. Mm. Uh, Rennie's going to go to the Rose Garden. He's going to cut some roses. And okay, there gonna... are a couple of little um, um, rows of roses in the back. Okay. He's gonna. Why doesn't this shoot the right Because it would be mean to shoot him, though. And you should not upset your wife for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rene will cut yeah. uh, <laughs> seven roses. Okay. And he's. Uh, Marty, can Grizak prepare his spells at his home? Sure. Thank you. You guys are heading into town, so you cut some roses. You go across the Twin Goblin Bridge. Yep. Uh, you uh, you head. You seem to be heading towards the ancient shrine. Yep. Uh, you can see that there are walls of stone that still remain. The roof has been cleared away, and that there is a um, a bunch of swirling uh, dried rose petals, like like this this ritual of Renee's has been going on for a very long time. Okay. Renee will put the seven roses down. Yep. On on the altar, as he always does. Yep. I figured he would have run out of roses by now. <laughs> he then stands up, takes one of the roses, and then he puts it into his efficient quiver, like he stows the rose. Holy okay. shit, he learned how to fire Flowers. No, no. Actually, he'll, <laughs> he'll stick it in a, into the uh, like under the breastplate, like okay. in the. Yeah. Um, the the shrine of seven roses is not a pleasant place for Renee to stand and walk. Um, being on holy ground is very difficult for Renee. 
Oh, come on, it's kind of good holy ground. How can it be bad at all, Feely, for the Renee? <laughs> give, give me a will save, Renee, as you are as you went up to the, the altar and you're placing the rose and you're, you're having a quick a quick word. Uh, would resistances apply to this? Uh, your channel resistance would apply to this. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Um... Uh, such an edge lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thirteen. Okay, <laughs> Renee, um, your disguise goes down. Like like coming in here makes your teeth grow long and your claws grow long and the slight hunch to become apparent. Huh. <laughs> there you are. I was wondering what it looked different about you. Oh my this is Radimer. Walk out. Are you, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> are you feeling quite well, Rene? We'll pop his neck. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, necromancer. Mm. Uh, he's going to take what, a moment. Whatever do you mean? He's going to turn his back on the people and start spending, I think it's like one or a minute or ten minutes to... <laughs> uh, Grizak is going to grab his hand and like, come on, let's go to my house! Let's go to my house! This ten way, this way! to do what? Uh, to put on a disguise. Oh, okay, yeah. He'll, he'll he, reapply his disguise, but the kind, idea he, takes... Kind of putting on a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> Grizak's like, come on, get spot. Some, some rouge. <laughs> <laughs> so let give him spell some color. Uh, all right. Um, Beautiful as ever. Who, it's oh, it takes one d three times ten minutes to put on the disguise. Let's do it while I'm preparing. Come on, you got some time. You okay. got some time yeah. for me yeah. to catch my. Get so my Radim back. Radimer was watching Renee. Who else was watching Renee? Or were you guys just sort of like milling around and and waiting? Uh, uh, I think we're just milling around. We'll let uh, him have his secret now. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, Radimer was keeping an eye on Rene. He was also like interested in the, it being a temple or whatever. So Radimer, Radimer might know. Uh, I also know what his fort save is against paralysis. So. <laughs> yeah, he, he gets a twenty-four on his knowledge, knowledge, religion, and his bluff. When he comes back, that he's hiding is twenty-five. Okay, that a bluff. That's bluff against the other. Oh no, he definitely had the conversation with Renee. Like yeah, he's yeah, still yeah. not getting ideas, and yeah. he, he said, well, "Whatever, whatever would give you that whatever." Idea. Do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, widgets eyeing suspiciously. Yeah, Radimer looked excited yeah. for a moment. Oh, Wid widgets been around Radimer long enough that he knows only one thing could get Radimer that excited. And it's an undead girlfriend or equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> Radimer just is not looking anyone in the eye when you guys are leaving, and you can see he's sort of lost in thought. Uh, hey, what do you know? He didn't turn into a pile of ash in the sun. <laughs> you you go to the That's you go to the 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 storm uh, the storm dwarf isle, or at least the shore of it. Um, it's a short swim. They kind of wade across a, wade across a, a, a small stream. Grizak's home. He disappears inside of the, uh, of the, the, the stone hinge that's been turned into a stone hut. Shit hut. He, he prepares his spells, and all of your druid spells are a plus one level for the day. Plus one caster level. I should remember to teleport here daily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I assume I remember this place really well. It's quite powerful. You constructed it, so... Um, well, you didn't construct the ancient henge. You constructed the walls around it. <laughs> Alright, where is the group going to go? Well... Let's go to... So, Green Thark's over in this direction. <laughs> <sighs> Let's find Green Thark.
All right, let's. Uh, well, uh, Grinthark, uh, how far north is this dragon ord? Uh, Grizak knows. Like several thousand miles. We should probably go to uh, the Vemarin uh, Temple to uh, see if that dwarf uh, die. Uh, there's some supposed to be artifact there. <laughs> and, uh, it's on the way. It's on the way, isn't it? There, she would give us good blessing. If it's on the way, then fine. Otherwise, I don't give a fuck about dwarves. Stinky things. <laughs> <laughs> you not your type if you either. drew a dwarf, what would you be drawing? Drawing? Uh, he starts drawing in the sand with his pee. That! <laughs> okay, he pees all over the place. Nah, 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 nah. He starts walking. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> all right, it is late morning by this point. Uh, after waiting for Renee, or uh, sorry, waiting for everyone to get gathered, uh, having a nice, a nice uh, breakfast, and then going to the stone hut of the Henge and waiting for Grizak to um, uh, prepare his spells, that the group then is leaving town via the old quarry road. Is that correct? I think so. Okay, you're heading into the Dragonfen to go uh, check out a monastery called the Monastery of Saint Vomaris, a yep. name that you should recognize from. Uh, We're gonna go to a monkery full of snake people. Well, heads with snake bodies. All right. Uh, I'm going to expose a particular monastery. Although I would be funny if I just went like, "Nah, fuck up. Let's go get Grizzak." <laughs> <laughs> it's Grizzak. He's like, "Ah, goddamn it." You should recognize this place. Uh, monastery. Let me... Does it, does it feel like epic conclusion? What's that? Ah. Ah, see, ah. Do you remember that fight? Yes, I do. Hell yeah. <laughs> do you remember that fight? Like How can you conclusion? forget? How can you forget this goddamn fight? <laughs> Shadow flew in that direction. Ah, crap! There's another one. This this was like Ninja Batman Strike Force. It was awesome. It was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It was, it was pretty cool. It's interesting playing the same map with a different set of characters, with the same set of characters, but with a different system. My movement's different now. <laughs> right. Fuck your dungeon. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a druid. I'm an earth element. I just flash through the dungeon. Ooh, let's see what's happening. <laughs> Dives in the ground. <laughs> Fly through the dungeon. All right, Ahmed. What's up? Look at, uh, look at what token's on the board. <laughs> Ahmed, Ahmed has, been, has, been ro has been rolling up this monk. And I don't, 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 don't want to play him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> has tweaked this character sheet like literally every day <laughs> for months. <laughs> yeah, he's good to go now. <laughs> so many now edits have good. been made to this uh, to this character sheet. Uh, all right. So uh, I'm going to take a quick wash and break and grab some caffeine. And then uh, we will introduce Vimaris, who is um, a... Or sorry, Cade, who is a... Uh, like, disciple of Vamaris's that has gone somewhat sideways uh, in his way of uh, in his way of doing things. Uh, Vamaris, of course, it was the elf, a monk of of the Palerite religion that traveled around with um, Grinthark, um, Grizak, Nibbles, Zira, Ziva, uh, Renee, um, who survived the Shadow War, who became a saint, and. Cade is one of St. Vamaris's last uh, disciples. Hmm. Also, da da da. Um, <laughs> because it was brought up last game, his clan name is Emberfist. Interesting. I know. Cade has. 
uh, family family in Vatapol. That will be very interesting because when favors come in and it's like, oh, you got some like monster in your family. Oh, oh, look at your monster. Oh, what can we get him to do? What can Snake Man get him to do? I am also going to pee on it, so you got this. You got I've been waiting for Blackade for so long that I forgot what it feels like to not. Well, fuck, I'm just ready for this. Yes, Cade's going to be very special to me. Um, finally, he is... Uh, so Cade... I don't want to blow away all of his things. Kind of keep surprises for the stream. Uh, but he's a uh, he's a monk uh, brawler. With a touch of alchemist. Just enough to <laughs> break the strength and the uh, AC and get some potions in for him. Um, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a very interesting character. Uh, I, I've been just literally modifying the character for months daily. <laughs> um, I, I took him as an interesting, um, took an interesting approach to him. Most characters play a certain way. Like, I am an archer. I am a whatever, uh, I, I'm a guy that trips you, try that grapples you, guy that just hits you straight on, I'm impossible to hit, so on and so forth. Uh, this guy, I made him so he's so malleable uh, that because of Brawler and his ability to switch feats on the fly, it's, um... How's <laughs> his will save? <laughs> his will save is pretty goddamn good, actually. <laughs> uh, his saves are, uh, here, let's quickly say them here. Uh, 13, 15, and 13 with plus twos and plus twos and another set of plus twos on top of all of that. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, the Vimaris is, uh, sorry, Cade is built to fight anything or any Anybody that is special has a specialty in something. He can be, he can use this thing to, because of the feats that I took and where they, what they branch onto. Um, I'm pretty sure Cade will be very good at fighting pretty much anybody that comes along. Yes, I love I love very flexible characters, in like druids, <laughs> clerics, druids mostly because of like mobility and stuff, but. Yeah, very, very, very flexible. Usually I get the flexibility from, like, um, non-combat, but I figured this guy had put flexibility into his combat ability. He has some out-of-combat stuff, but mostly... Uh, he's, he's a grunt. He's a, he's a monk. He's a fighting monk. Cade. All right, uh, Ahmed. We're finally introducing Cade, man. Finally, Marty. <laughs> It only takes like four months. <laughs> How long has it been actually since? Uh... It's been a while. Uh, you need to roll seventy six for his age. Oh yes. <clears throat> it's will save should be godlike. Twenty nine. Okay, so he is sixty eight, seventy seven years old. Seventy seven. Are you changing it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Cade is a trained monk. He was trained by St. Vimaris, the Pelorian monk. Um, after his master's death, however, Cade had a change of heart. Um, he turned from the Pelorian faith because Pelor was supposed to be strong and the god of renewal, but Cade, in his 77 years, in his many decades of being a, a monk, has seen the Palerite church basically fall and fail. Once great temples to this god of light um, were all across Terra's lean and other lands, the Empire has seen that Palor, um, uh, the Palor faith and church kind of swept aside. While you never had the heart to discuss such... Um, misgivings 
and doubt with Saint Vimaris. It was his death that kind of marked to Cade a new, uh, a new beginning. Cade had traveled to the west where there were still some strong churches. Some that managed to survive the conquest of the Imperium and a god of, tyrant, of tyrants, is still worshipped in hidden places in the western part of Avicea. You found an old monk there that taught you, while some may, may, believe, some may say in effect, uh, vile tricks, this old crusty master taught you the ways of the venom fist. Something that Saint Vimaris would have never enjoyed seeing you perform. But then perhaps that is why Palerites failed. They tried to fight the fight the good way. Whereas the Hexterites are still around. They knew that there were no rules or there were no weapons that should not be used, especially in light of war. Putting restrictions on these things only tied hands behind your back. And Hextor was a god of six arms. While this does not give you great joy in being known as a fallen disciple of Palor, Cade decided that this would be the path that he would take. He might still have a grim respect for the Palorite teachings, but what good are these teachings if the things they foretell don't come to pass? What good is renewal if the cycle becomes broken? Cade knows that the monastery of St. Vomaris is a dangerous place. Um, the old elf lived out his years there. And you suspect that while you may not have, while you may have turned from the teachings of your old master, um, he likely has a number of things there. That his former students could use. Treasure. He was a great monk after all. And that is something that, that Cade aspires to be. <clears throat> Strange, you have an elf and a dwarf monk of a human god, which is really interesting. Of course, the human god was worshipped by the coronal, uh, the last coronal of Terrasleen. God of dawn, god of renewal, and strength through those things. Cade is a walking armory? Look at all the weapons he's carrying. <laughs> Sarigama Kyoketsu Shoge A shuriken gun. A, a kukri A light crossbow A temple sword Wow, okay Chain star the, the two big things are basically the crossbow and the sword And the kuk yeah, kukri's not that big So Cade had it's made not... his way into the monastery I know it says <laughs> monastery of Saint uh, uh Kyrixus, that was the former name, it got it got reconsecrated uh, to the monastery of uh, Saint Vimaris. Uh, it pains you to see that the holes uh, that the holes are, are stand in disrepair. Um, this place, at one time, did train monks of your religion or your former religion, 
Um, it does look like something has broken into here. Like how far your faith has fall, uh, all, your your former um, uh, priesthood has fallen when they can't even guard their own abbeys and temples. There just wasn't enough of them. Um, there are all sorts of rodents and bats and birds that have that have made their nests and homes amongst the ancient stones. Many of the many of the um, the windows are cracked or broken, have been boarded up and then pulled down. There are signs that there are creatures living here that slither through the ruins. Cade had made it. Ah, fuck! It, can you do we reroll ones on the hit points? Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ah, uh, better. <laughs> Uh. It saddens Cade more when you see that with the, the place where St. Vimaris was uh, interred was dug up. <sighs> Son of a bitch. The great stones that had laid over top of his corpse where many of the saints had been buried in times long ago was cracked and broken open by ra by by grave robbers it's not out of respect for the religion it's out of the respect for the religion religion by extension because he really respected and liked vimaris do you know like that was, he was the reason that he's out of a loyalty to him you decide to go and check out the rest of the temple to see if there are other places um, where perhaps grave robbers have not. Um, feels bad when adventurers come and take stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> Your silence is <laughs> <takes it off>. <laughs> <laughs> Cade had made it all the way up to St. Vimaris's office. I need to... Um, where would St. Vimaris had his office? Um, maybe up in somewhere with windows. Third floor. Third floor oh. in the in the creepy area? Probably not. Probably here. There we go. There are no windows in that room though. Um, there are no windows fucking anywhere. No, there's not <laughs> a lot of them. Okay, yeah, you you make it all the way up to Saint Vimaris's um uh, office. We'll say F twenty five. Twenty five. Uh, okay. You end up finding some of his things. Okay. Uh, in his desk, you find an amulet okay. that is on a chain that is wrapped around an old scroll tube. Right. Um, I pick it up. What's the amulet of? Um, it is of Palor. All right, take the and drop it. <laughs> take the take the chain off. Okay. Um, Are you unfurling the scroll? Yeah. It is a letter that is written upon the parchment that might have been Vimaris's final words. Okay. It says, "To my disciples, the true conflict is not as plain as day." The Imperials are not the true enemy, despite their transgressions. Nor are the people of shadow, despite their natures. The enemy hides from the light and is anathema to life itself. They are consumers of all folk, all peoples, 
and entire worlds have succumbed to their depredations. Seek out the heretic, an elf that turned from the light of the moon to wallow in shades. Seek her wisdom, and do not judge her too harshly, for she has sacrificed much to understand our enemy. Unfortunately, she is long overdue from her last mi mission. Here is what divinations have revealed. She traversed the Shadowgram, seeking the sixth wind. Into the Nexus she went, but did not return. She is neither alive nor dead. Her shell is strong, but unmoving. Beware the snakes that bite. Beware the stare that binds. Find her, my followers. Shadow, after all, cannot exist without the light. Vomaris. And I can paste that. I got it. And I'll paste the letter in party pages somewhere. That sounds like a yoldy quest. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's at this point in time where you found the treasure first and then have to fight the monsters. It's a little, uh, a little reversey, reversey, uh, Rue. Uh, and, um, it's when these horrible spellcasting snake things find out that you're, uh, in their territory and begin blasting Vimaris with spells. Let's see how well Vimaris Cade. fares. Uh, sorry, Cade. 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 Vimaris. Cade, do you want to roll initiative? Sure. In fact, I'll roll initiatives for all of you. Um, we'll say that Cade's, Cade spent a lot of time kind of tracking down the temple. You didn't know exactly where to go. Uh, and then once you found this place, you were really cautious in, in, in approaching. And apparently the caution was warranted. However, um, the lure of treasure and the words of your master were, were, were too great. Uh, those that were, that were arriving on the scene are probably alerted to, like, lightning bolts going off in one of the higher parts of the tower. Um, cinematic point of convenience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was... <laughs> 100%. This is story beat. <laughs> yeah, we've got a I bunch picked of... one without windows. <laughs> Third floor um, east. Marty, if I knew that I might be into a fight here, can I drink my mutagen coming like into ten here? Ten minutes. Ten minutes per level. Oh. So an hour and forty. <laughs> actually, an hour and a half. Uh, yeah, you could have drank your mutagen, especially if you plunged deeper into this place and saw signs of creatures. So yeah, your mutagen could have been drank. Yeah. All right, initiative. Okay, so my initiative would be plus. Six. And I'm gonna need some modifier. help because there's a lot of characters. Yeah. People that are not gonna go rushing into the temple are probably uh, Cali, Radimer. No. Um. Evander will if if he has a way to keep up with Zeta. All right, Grizak, would you roll for K initiative? Cade's at the bottom. Grizak rolls a <sighs> fucking one. <laughs> Better him than Cade. <laughs> Okay. 
you guys don't have to wait for me. You can fill in your initiatives. Okay. okay. Yeah, so let me do Grizzak. Cade's way at the bottom. Has got five. Okay, actually, here, put K down here. Roll a ten and a f two. There we go. Edit in browser. 